Good morning, everybody. Today we will continue with the sources of magnetic field. During the last lecture, we have seen the magnetic force acting on moving charges or magnetic force acting on currents or straight current carrying uh, wires. So today we will talk about what are the sources of magnetic fields. So we will investigate how to produce magnetic field. We will talk about magnetic field produced by a single moving charged particle. Let's consider you have a charged particle and it is moving in certain direction. And what is the magnetic field produced by that charged par particle? We will talk about first of all, and then we will um, discuss the magnetic field produced by a straight current carrying wire. So we will uh, spend uh, some time for it. And in addition to that, we have, um, we will also discuss a current carrying wire bent into a circle. Let's consider that uh, you have a wire uh, with that shaped loop, okay? Or uh, many loops. So what is the magnetic field produced such a uh, loop or circle made from a current carrying wire. In addition to that, today we will see um, the repulsive and attractive forces between current carrying wires. So here you have one wire conductor and there is a current uh, within the uh, conductor and here there is another wire and there is a current also within that wire. So what is the attractive and repulsive forces in between? In addition to that, uh, during the next lecture on Thursday, we will talk about Ampere's law and we will discuss how to use that law to calculate magnetic field of symmetric current distributions. And we will discuss the microscopic currents within materials. So what kind of materials, for example, uh, in, in nature, there are many different types of magnetic materials produce um, magnetic field around itself. So we will discuss um, paramagnetism, ferromagnetism, and those other types of magnetism, also diamagnetism. First of all, let's see here a very nice example of um, a current carrying coil or sol solenoid. Here you see a huge solenoid. I mean, you can see here that there are some guys, okay? But look at that radius, inner radius of that solenoid. This is huge, many meters, okay? So huge electromagnet if you consider the people here around the magnet. So uh, this type of huge magnets um, are used at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, in order to produce huge magnetic fields in the center of the solenoid. So uh, after that lecture, we will learn that uh, what, is, what is the magnetic field due to a solenoid, how to calculate it, and also we will um, discuss what is the source of magnetic fields. Okay, so let's start with the magnetic field of a moving charge. Here we have a positively charged particle and it is moving in certain direction with uh, velocity of V, okay? So this is the direction of the velocity. Positive charge is moving. And then I would like to calculate magnetic field produced by that charge in certain point here, for example or here, or here, or here. So what is the magnetic field produced by that charge in, 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 in space around the uh, charge? The uh, situation is completely different from the electric fields produced by charges. For example, if you consider the electric field lines uh, produced by the positive charges, they will be from charge to the space, okay? And if you consider negative charges, field lines will be along the negative charge, okay? But in case of magnetic fields produced by 
charges, the situation is completely different. The direction of the uh, field lines, magnetic field lines, um, is also completely different from the electric field lines produced by dead charges. Here we have a um, formula for the magnetic field in certain point, let's say here in that point, produced by that positive charge. This is the charge of the particle Q, this is the velocity of the particle V, and this is the square of distance between charge and that point. Okay, so what we see here, this one and this one, we know from the equation of the electric field produced by such charge, right? But the different thing is here that we have velocity. If the velocity of the charge is zero, then magnetic field is zero. You can produce electric field lines with charges without any velocity, okay? Let's say here we have a charge which is not moving, okay? It can produce electric field lines around itself from charge to the space, right? But if it has no velocity, it cannot produce magnetic field. For the magnetic field, we need moving charges. Don't forget this one. And um, so this, this, is the, this is the direction of the magnetic field. This is magnetic magnitude of the magnetic field. And this is the direction of the magnetic field. So how to determine the direction of the magnetic field produced by that charge, you have to use right hand rule, okay? So here we have charge, this is the moving direction. So your thumb will show the direction of the velocity and your fingers will show you the direction of the magnetic field. So if you consider that there is a circle around that charge here or here, so magnetic direction of the magnetic field will be tangent to that circle at any point. Okay, here we have mu zero, which is magnetic constant. We will go into detail later on. So if you look from the back side of the charge, so charge is moving like this. This is perspective view of that picture. And if you look from the back side, this is the charge moving into the page, okay, if you consider. Then these are the magnetic field lines, okay? This different radius, like here, okay? So the magnetic field here in, in any point tangent to the field lines. So then this formula can be written like this, mu zero over four pi Q and Q times velocity over R square. Here we have unit vector from point charge toward where field is measured. So here we have point charge, and this is the point where we would like to measure the magnetic field. So this, this is given by R, and here we have a unit vector, okay, which is shown by um, R with hat here. So um, in order to calculate the in order to determine the direction of the magnetic field, you can use also that relation. This is vectorial product. So um, your, your uh, fingers, four fingers, will show the direction of the velocity, okay? And then curl them to the, um, to the direction of the unit vector R, then you will get the direction of the magnetic field in certain, in certain point. If you are looking for the magnetic field in that point, then this unit vector will be like this along that point. If you are looking for the magnetic field in that point, then unit vector will be along this line, okay? But velocity is same. So uh, then the magnetic field due to a point charge with constant velocity is given with that expression. Do you have any question here? Okay, then. Let's discuss the um, magnetic force and electric force and the ratio uh, of them. 
uh, in case of that example, this is the forces between two moving protons. Uh, we have here x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And here we have a positively charged proton with Q charge. And here we have another proton. And this proton is moving in positive x direction with velocity v. And this proton is moving in the opposite direction with velocity v. Okay, here we show minus v because the direction of the uh, velocity is opposite to that one. So um, what we have here, since we have um, velocity of the charge and here since we have Q, then we will have that magnetic field produced by that Q on that charge. Okay, so magnetic field is given by that expression. So how to calculate this one? Just use your right hand rule. Your thumb will show the direction of the velocity and your four fingers will show you the direction of the magnetic field. Or you can calculate like this. This is the velocity direction like this. And here we have unit vector from that charge to that charge, okay? So if you calculate the vectoral product, then it will be like this, okay? Again, by using the right hand rule, the direction of the magnetic field will be like this, acting on that charge. So, um, but um, what about the magnetic force due to that magnetic field? Here I have a proton and this proton has certain velocity and there is a magnetic field due to the neighboring proton here. And then what is the magnetic field, magnetic force? You know that magnetic force is given by Q times VB, right? We have done it during the last lecture. And again, the direction of the force is determined by the by the right hand rule. So then here we have a magnetic force acting on that proton. Since this is positively charged, and this is also positively charged, there is, an, there is a repulsive force, repulsive um, electric force between that two charges, and that repulsive force is along that direction. So here we have electric force and magnetic force. So electric force can be written like this. We have done it uh, during the first chapters by using the Coulomb's law, one over four pi epsilon zero uh, square of the charge and the distance between the uh, charges R square. So uh, magnetic field is given by that expression. Okay, so just use it here. This is the Q, this is the direction of the uh, velocity. So this is the magnetic field produced by that charge. So velocity is along that direction for that charge. Put it there, velocity along the x direction. And what about the unit vector? Unit vector is along the y axis, then put j here. Then here we have r square. So this is the magnetic field. So uh, the magnetic force due to that charge is given by that expression QVB. Here we have minus V because the velocity of that charge is along the opposite direction compared to that one. Then here we have B produced by that charge on that charge. So what is B here? Just take this one, put it there. Finally, we can get the magnetic force acting on that charge due to the magnetic field produced by that charge. So if you compare them, this is the magnetic force, put it there. This is the electric force. We have already calculated here and put it there. So finally, we will have that expression, okay? This constants will cancel each other here within that equations. And finally, we will have here epsilon zero, mu zero times V square. This is a constant. This is also constant and here we have V square. So uh, later on we will see that the uh, epsilon zero times mu zero will be given by one over C square. This C is the velocity of light, okay? Then just put that relation here instead of that guy. Then 
the ratio between magnetic force and electric force is given by V square over C square. V is the velocity of the protons. So this was very simple example in order to understand the magnetic field produced by a moving charge. So we are talking about magnetic field of a moving charge. Here we have a moving charge and it produces magnetic field on other charges. So now let's continue with uh, magnetic field of a current element, okay? Here, until that point, we have considered that we have a single charge and moving in certain direction and it produces magnetic field. So what about current? What is the current? We know that the current is the move, movement of the charges, right? So within current, we have many charges. So then how to calculate the magnetic field of a current element? So this is the idea. The total magnetic field of several moving charges is the vector sum of each field. So here, let's have a look on that picture. We have a current element. The thickness, uh, sorry, the length is dl, okay? And here we have a current which is given by i in, in that direction, okay? So we would like to calculate magnetic field produced by that infinitesimal um, current element, okay? So the length is dl and we are looking for the db produced by a very small segment of the current element. So how to calculate this one? So what, it, what was the meaning of current? Current means that moving charges. If you have a current, it means that here we have many moving charges. And we have just learned that moving charges produce magnetic field around the yourself. So then by, by calculating the total charge within that current element, I can calculate the magnetic field. So let's start with the volume of the segment. The volume of that guy is dl, length of the current element, and the area, area times dl, will give us volume of that current element, okay? And um, how many charges do we have? We have n moving charges, um, or n moving charge particles per unit volume, and each of charge has charge of q, Okay, then what is the total charge dq within this current element with the length of dl? So dq is the total charge within that current element. So dq is the number of charges in unit volume times the volume of that current element times the charge of each charge particle. Okay, this is the total charge within that, uh, the current element. Okay, it is nice. So then let's consider that each charge, each Q charge within that current element has certain drift velocity. Okay, then just use that expression here. Okay, so what we have here, dB, the magnetic field produced by this dl element, okay, mu zero over four pi. Instead of q, just use dq, okay? Just put this one. Instead of v, just use drift velocity. Put it there, drift velocity. Sinus phi, the angle, um, the angle between the uh, drift velocity and the um, the axis goes to the point where we would like to measure the magnetic field and this is the um, r distance from the current element to the point where we would like to calculate the magnetic field and then instead of dq just take this one n times q times a times dl okay so we have, um, we have calculated this one in, in previous lectures, but we have this one. This is current density, right? 
n q v d this is current density j and if you multiply this current density with a then you can calculate the current in the element okay so we have done it in previous lectures so then instead of q v d a just use current and put into the equation here we have db magnetic field produced by that current element is given by mu zero over four pi the current in the element and the length of the element and sinus phi over r square do you have any question here within that calculations then let's continue here we have a current element okay and the length of that current element is given by dl and i would like to calculate the db we have already calculated so what about the direction of the magnetic field produced by that current element the direction of the magnetic field again determined by the right hand rule your thumb here again okay will show the direction of the current or direction of the drift velocity okay then this fingers will show the direction of the magnetic field what do you see here that we have a circle and the magnetic field um, in each point on that circle tangent to the circle right so by right hand rule or you can use that expression magnetic field due to an infinitesimal current element is given by db and mu zero over four pi this is magnetic constant this is the current within the current element this is the length of the um, element and this is the unit vector from element toward where field is measured so if you are measuring the field here then the r vector is along that direction if you are measuring the magnetic field here the r vector is along that direction okay so this is the distance from element to where field is measured so this formula here is called as the law of eo suwar in turkish we say biot sawart but uh, these are french guys french scientists okay so this is the french pronunciation bio suwar um, I think it is not so easy to pronounce like this. So you can you can pronounce pronounce uh, the names as you wish. So again, this is the um, this is the weave of the um, weave of the magnetic field lines fr from the back side. Okay, so this is the direction of the current. Now the direction of the current is into the into the page. Okay then we have magnetic field lines magnetic field lines like this so magnetic field lines are like this and here if you look from that back side you will see like this this is the direction of the current into the page and these are the magnetic field lines around the current element okay so now um, let's give a very uh, short example um, concerning currents and planetary magnetism so we, we have learned during the last lecture that earth has certain magnetic field around itself and it is very useful for many applications and this uh, magnetic field of the earth is caused by currents circulating within its molten conducting interior so in the center of the in the interior part of the earth there are currents okay so due to that currents like this one magnetic field is produced so earth has some certain magnetic field okay so um, in addition to that these currents are steered by our planet's relatively rapid spin one rotation per day okay earth is traveling around itself but what about the moon the moon's internal currents are much weaker compared to the earth it is much smaller than the earth and then earth sorry moon 
has a predominantly solid interior. Okay, here we are talking about molten interior within the Earth, but solid interior within the Moon. And the Moon spins slowly, one rotation per 27 days, let's say. So for Earth, one rotation per day, this is one rotation per 27 days. Hence, the moon's magnetic field is only about 10 to minus 4, as strong as that of the Earth. So the magnetic field of the moon is 10,000 times smaller than the magnetic field of Earth. So during the last lecture, we have discussed how the Earth's magnetic field is important. And we have discussed some applications, compass, and um, also satellites, okay, use the Earth's magnetic field. So there are many, many applications which we use uh, Earth's magnetic field. So now um, let's try to calculate magnetic field of a current segment. Here uh, we have a picture, a copper wire carries a steady 125 amp. This is the direction of the current. The current is 125 amp to an electroplating tank. Here we have an electroplating tank. This is um, a very widely used method to cover metals on uh, to cover metals with non-corrosive materials. Very widely used in 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 automobile automobile industry or also in other fields of industry. Okay, you can you can check what is electroplating. So um, then the question is that, find the magnetic field due to a one centimeter segment of that wire. Here we have, um, we choose one centimeter, very small segment from that wire. And we would like to calculate magnetic field due to that segment at that point and that point. So point P1 here, okay. 1.2 meter uh, apart from that segment. And here we have again P2, the distance from the uh, current segment to the position is again same, okay? Um, but, but the position is different. So here we have 30 degrees between the current direction and R vector here. So how to calculate the magnetic field. Magnetic field is calculated by using that expression. So at point one, here we have R, okay, it is given. We have current, it is given. Mu zero is constant, okay, then it is always given in the questions, okay. So what is R vector? This is X axis, this is Y axis. R vector for that point from that current segment to, to the, that position. Um, this is unit vector. I can also represent it by the unit vector of J because it is along the Y axis. So put it J here. And what is DL? DL is always along the current, okay? Don't forget this. DL is um, length of the current segment is always, which is vector and always along the direction of the current. And then the direction of the current is in a negative x direction. Then put here negative i, okay, unit vector along the x-axis. Then what we have here, so um, minus i vectorial dot j will give us k unit vector, okay. And then here we have minus mu zero over four pi i times dl over r square. So mu zero is given in the questions and current is given in the problem. And here we have DL, what was DL? The length of that current segment, it is one centimeter, put here in terms of meter, okay? Then the distance from the current segment to position, which is also given 1.2, put it there, then you can calculate magnetic field at that position due to one current segment with one centimeter length. That's nice. So what about the direction of the B is into the XY plane, 
okay, in that point into the XY plane. You can, you can, um, you can, you can see from that one minus K, okay? So this is Z direction, this is negative Z direction, and here the direction of the magnetic field is along the negative Z direction, okay? Like this here. So now let's have a look at the magnetic field here in position two. Again, let's have a look at the L. The L here along the negative X direction. For this reason, I can use minus I unit vector along the uh, negative X direction. So what about the R here? R is unit vector from current element to position here. And this R can be written in that form. This R has two components which is perpendicular and parallel component. And this perpendicular component is given by that expression along the y-axis sinus 30 degrees J plus the component along the negative X direction. So minus cosine uh, 30 degrees I. So this minus comes from negative um, X direction. Then put that R here. Okay, here we have I, I then there will be a zero from that vectorial product. And from that vectorial product, we, have, we will have minus K. Then this is the result of the B due to that current segment, um, with that current passing through on that wire. So this is the magnetic field. Do we have any question here in that point? Let's continue with magnetic field of a straight current carrying conductor. Here we have a conductor, uh, it carries current I and its, its length is given by a 2A from minus A to A. And this is the uh, X axis, this is the Y axis and the current is flowing along the Y axis. So this is the origin. So um, what we have here, we have a P point and we would like to calculate the magnitude of magnetic field and direction of the magnetic field produced by that current element, okay, dl. So the magnetic field is calculating by, calculated by that expression, which, you have, which we have already uh, got that uh, formula. This is the distance from the uh, wire, from the conductor to the P position. And this is the uh, distance from current element to the position P, okay, which is given by R. If you um, use that expression here instead of R square, okay, um, we can calculate dB. In addition to that, here we have dL, and here we have what else? We have R vector, okay? And this dl dot r can be written dl times r times sinus phi, okay, angle between dl vector and r vector here phi. So instead of sinus phi, okay, I can use that expression sinus of that angle phi minus phi. And this is equal to x over r, okay x over r here. So um, what else? Here we have dl. dl is the length of the current segment, right? And this is along the y-axis. So instead of dl, I can use dy. So now just put this dl here, put this uh, sinus phi here, and then put this r here then we can calculate the B. B is given by mu sefer I over four pi. This is constant, constant, uh, constant. And um, here we have R square. And due to the sinus phi, we have uh, that expression. Put also this one here, then we will have this expression. This uh, dy comes from the dl, okay, because we consider that dl is equal to dy, very small 
uh, part along the y-axis you can consider like this and then the, what about the integral limits from minus a to positive a these are the integral limits then uh, we have this integral if you solve that integral with y then uh, we will get that magnetic field mu zero i over four pi two a over x times that expression what we have here what was 2a 2a is the length of the conductor right x is the distance from the origin to that point okay and what is this this is the r distance from the current segment to the p position and b is the magnetic field produced by that complete wire on that point okay so now let's consider that the wire is infinitely long okay then 2a length of the conductor is too much considered to the x then look at this one if a is too much to consider to x then this expression will give us just a and here we have another a you can cancel each other here we have two here we have four then we will have that expression b is equal to mu zero times i over two pi x here we have x okay if the wire is infinitely long okay in that condition we have magnetic field along the um uh, we have uh, the magnetic field in the p position so uh, you can calculate the magnetic field direction okay by using that expression from the L to R, okay, from the L to R, then uh, we have magnetic field direction here in that point, or you can also calculate the direction of the magnetic field or determine the direction of the magnetic field by using the right hand rule. This is the current direction, okay, then this fingers will show the direction of the magnetic field in that point also here. So around the wire, there will be magnetic field lines. Like this one we have discussed, okay? This is the wire and magnetic field lines around that wire. So uh, now let's consider that we have wire and we have magnetic field lines around the wire with some certain radius okay so just consider this one what you see here that b has the same magnitude at all points on a circle centered on the conductor so if you take a circle here around the wire so magnitude of b okay here, 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 everywhere on that circle, magnitude of B will be same, but the direction of B must be everywhere tangent to such a circle. So B is always tangent to the circle, direction of the B. So then if you consider that this X is radius of that circle, then instead of X, just use R here, okay, then, magnetic field near a long straight current carrying conductor like this one is given by that expression mu zero times i over two pi r so now let's try to use that expression within that example magnetic field of a single wire like this one okay a long straight conductor carries a one amp current at what distance from the axis of the conductor does the resulting magnetic field have this value 0.5 times 10 to minus 4 tesla it is about the earth's magnetic field for example in gebze at gebze technical university the earth's magnetic field is around 0.35 times 10 to minus 4 tesla okay so um one and current is flowing in that conductor and um, in certain distance from the wire the magnetic field is this one so it asks that what is that distance so we have that formula okay 
mu zero i over two pi r, i is given and mu zero is constant. We know two pi, we know the b, b is given, put it there. So we need distance. If you take distance from that equation, you can calculate four millimeter. So here we have a single wire. But what happens if you have many wires, two wires, for example, okay? So this wire will produce magnetic field on the neighboring wire. If you have another wire here, then there will be magnetic force, attractive or repulsive forces in between, okay? And there will be magnetic field lines. So many magnetic field lines due to the lines, due to the wires. For this reason, we use special cables in computers, also in cables for audio video equipment, and they, they produce no magnetic field or very little magnetic field because they have special design. Within each cable here, you see, close the spaced wires carry current in both directions along the length of the cable. So, uh, if you have current in that direction, okay, there is another current with the same amount in the opposite direction. Then the magnetic field produced by that current is canceled by the magnetic field produced by the opposite current. So uh, this is the technological applications of uh, current carrying wires. So now let's continue with the force between parallel conductors. Here we have current carrying conductor. Here we have another current carrying conductor. And uh, here we have I current. Here we have I prime, okay? And um, this is the length of that conductor, let's say. So this wire or that conductor produces magnetic field lines around itself like this, as we have discussed, okay? Then we have magnetic field in that direction on that conductor. So here we have current, here we have magnetic field, then there will be force, which is given by that expression, which we have discussed during the last lecture. The force is given by current times L, times B, okay? B is this one produced by that current carrying conductor. So we have magnetic field lines like this. This is B produced by that one. And the force acting on that wire due to magnetic field produced by that current carrying conductor. So by using the right hand rule, you can calculate, you can find that the direction of the magnetic force is uh, in that direction. So this is, uh, attractive force between the wires, okay? So just try to go into detail a little bit. So we are trying to calculate the force acting on that conductor, upper conductor, produced by that lower conductor. So B produced by that conductor is given by that expression. R is the distance in between, okay? current flowing here, and this is the magnitude of the magnetic field. Then I will try to calculate force. Just take this B here, okay? And here we have I prime, current in that conductor, length of that conductor, and B produced by that conductor on this one. Then we have that expression. So what do you see here? If you take this L here, F over L, Take L, put it there, and you have that expression, mu zero I times I prime, current in first conductor, I prime current in the upper conductor, and distance between the conductors, which is given by F over L, magnetic force per unit length between two long parallel current carrying conductors. So, then, um, what about the direction of the force? Two parallel conductors carrying current in the same direction like this attract each other. So you can, you can uh, calculate by yourself. 
So this produces magnetic field lines. So due to that magnetic field, there is a force in that, that, that direction. In addition to that, this current here produces magnetic field lines around itself and also apply magnetic field on that conductor. Then there will be force in that direction. So they will attract each other. If we have uh, two parallel conductors carrying current in the same direction, then they attract each other. If the direction of either current is reversed, the force also reverse. So if you reverse the direction of the current or keep this current in this direction and reverse the direction of this one, then uh, we will have repulsive force between, between the conductors. So you can also see it here, okay? You can use that formula just uh, simply to understand the direction of the force. If the direction of the currents are same, you can consider that positive positive, then here you have positive force. It means that there is an attractive force between the conductors. If one of them are opposite to another one, then there will be one negative, let's consider, then negative force, you can consider like this, okay, there is a repulsive force in between. So this formula can also be used in order to understand um, the attractive and repulsive forces between uh, parallel conductors. Any question here? Actually, that formula which we have derived now is the basis of the official SI definition of the ampere. Uh, we use that um, ampere unit for the current, right? So what is one ampere? So by using that formula, you can understand it better. One ampere is that unvarying current. You can consider that constant current, let's say. If present in each of two parallel conductors of infinite length and one meter apart in empty space. So we have two conductors. They are one meter apart from each other. And uh, one ampere is in that conductor. One ampere is in that conductor, okay? Then um, causes each conductor to experience a force of exactly two times 10 to minus seven Newtons per meter of length. So this is the formula, 10 to minus seven Newtons per meter of length, okay? So one amp here, one amp here, one meter here, then we will have that uh, magnetic force per unit length. So uh, this is the definition of the ampere, one ampere here in that conductor. So uh, if you put that, force per length here, 10, two times 10 to minus seven Newtons per meter, then put one amp here, one amp here, and two pi one meter here, then you can calculate magnetic constant, and magnetic constant is given by that expression, four pi times my 10 to minus seven Tesla meter per, um, per amp. You can, you can consider. So this is the magnetic constant. Uh, in, in the previous chapters, in the first chapters of that semester, we have also determined the SI definition of the clone, which was the amount of charge transferred in one second by a current of one ampere. So you drive one ampere current in that conductor and the, the amount of charge transferred in one second by a current of one ampere gives us uh, the clone. We, ha we have discussed this one in the first lecture, I think. Do we have any question here? Then let me continue with forces between parallel wires. So let's consider two straight parallel superconducting wires. Here we have one superconducting wire. Here we have another superconducting wire they are 4.5 millimeter apart each other. This is the distance between the wires, less than uh, one centimeter, okay? 0.5 centimeters, something like this. And they, they carry equal currents of 
15 kilo amp huge current okay so in that direction and also in that direction because uh, they have equal currents in opposite directions so what force per unit length does each wire exert on the other so due to that current this conductor will exert force on that conductor and due to that current this conductor will exert a force on that conductor so here before starting for the solving the question i would like to remind you that this current is huge okay 15000 amp or 15 kilo amp so in order to derive such huge currents you need very low resistive materials and you can do it in superconductors which we have discussed superconductors in superconductors below the certain temperature the resistivity is theoretically is zero so you can derive huge currents okay if you try to derive such huge currents in normal conductors they will be very hot and you melt them okay don't forget this one so now let's try to calculate the force per length okay which is asked within the question this is the formula okay and current is given 15 a thousand amp current in the other cable it is also given okay they are equal to each other here we have mu zero this is constant put it there and what else um, here we have distance in between just put this one also in meter then we can calculate one times 10 to 4 newton per meter this is huge force okay huge force acting on each cable actually more than one ton per meter so then in order to produce such cables you have to be very careful due to huge forces okay you have to carry out mechanical stress analysis before you produce cables from that materials any question here okay then let me continue with magnetic field of a circular loop here uh, we have a straight conductor carrying a current but what happens if you have um, a circular current loop like this okay if we have a current in the, the circular loop so what is the magnetic field produced by a circular current loop so here you see example of the doorbell electric doorbell okay the old versions here we have many loops you see and here for example there is an electric motor many loops we have here and here we have transformator or transformer many loops you see here and here we have a crane magnetic crane here we have an electromagnet there are many loops here you cannot see the loops but there are many loops here so you can carry um, heavy uh, iron particles or iron containing particles so we have many applications of a circular uh, current loop okay because they produce magnetic field so how to calculate this magnetic field this in that part i will try to do that so this is a loop a circular current loop here we have the current okay and now uh, i would like to calculate the direction and magnitude of the magnetic field at that point this is the x-axis this is the y-axis this is the z-axis okay here i choose a small segment okay in that loop the l and this is the distance from that segment to p position this is the uh, unit vector along that uh, direction and this is the distance from the origin of the loop to the p position this is the radius of the loop a okay and this is the angle theta between the y-axis and this one so now what is the magnetic field here so uh, if you apply um, that rule okay the direction of the magnetic field will be like this perpendicular to that vector and also perpendicular to that vector okay along that direction so um, 
then this has two components. One is along the X component, one is along the Y component. So just try to calculate them. Here we have R square. Instead of R square, we can use X square plus A square like this. Okay, here we have DL and uh, then here we have DB. And DB has two components. Here we have X component, Y component. Here we have theta angle, okay, theta angle. Then X component will be given by DB times cosine theta. And Y component is given by DB times sine theta, this one. So DB we have calculated, put it there. Instead of cosine theta, just use uh, A over R, A over R. Instead of sinus theta, just use x over r, x over r, okay? Then, so what about x, uh, what about the y component? The y component will be zero because uh, if you choose another um, infinitesimal part, very small segment here, this will have opposite direction, magnetic field, okay? Those are, they cancel each other. Then finally, we will have certain magnetic field along the x axis. So now let's try to calculate Bx. Okay, in order to calculate the magnetic field along the x axis produced by that loop, I should integrate over dl. I have many, many dl segments on that loop. Okay, if I integrate this one, okay, then I can calculate Bx. So here we have A, which is constant. Here I have X. X is constant, A is constant. So current, mu zero, four pi, they are constant. I can take all of them out of the integral. So here I have just DL. What is DL? DL, I mean the integral DL will give us the circumference of the circle, right? This one, which is given by two pi a radius of the loop. Then instead of this integral, just put this one here. Then the x magnetic field on axis of a circular current carrying loop. This is the axis of the loop, okay? And this is the magnetic field, which is given by mu zero i a square over 2x square plus a square power 3 half. Here, um, then this is the magnitude. What about the direction? Okay, direction of the magnetic field along the, um, along the axis of the circular loop can be found by the right-hand rule again. So here we have current direction. Look at the current direction. So just four fingers will shove the current, then this thumb will shove the magnetic field produced by that current, like we have done it for the magnetic dipole during the last lecture, okay? So this is the direction of the magnetic field, direction of the current in the loop. This is the direction of the magnetic field. If you reverse the magnetic, if you reverse the current, then you reverse the direction of the magnetic field. Do you have any question here? Okay, then let's continue with the magnetic field on the axis of a coil. Here we have one circular current loop, okay? Just one loop. If you have many loops, what was coil? Coil contains many loops. Here we have single loop. We have calculated magnetic field along the axis of the single loop. In a coil or in a solenoid, we have many, many loops, okay? So then what is the magnetic field on the axis of a coil? A coil consisting of n number of loops, many loops, all with the same radius, let's consider, okay? Then the total magnetic field is n times the field of a single loop. This was the field of the single loop, which we have calculated, just multiply it by n. Because each loop will produce that field, then this is the total field of the loop. Uh, total field of the um, coil. And uh, then 
let's consider we have uh, such coil and what is the magnetic field in the center just here in the center what is x x is the distance from origin to p position now take this p position here now x will be zero right in the center of the coil then put zero here instead of x and then the magnetic field at the center of n circular current carrying loops or magnetic field at the center of a coil here here at the center or if you have here okay then we will have that expression this will be zero and here we will have just a okay radius of the loop this one and this is the number of the turns number of the loops okay how many loops you have or how many loops you have okay and this is the current in the loop okay then you can calculate the magnetic field so uh, what we have here this is the x from origin to the certain point okay x is increasing and this is the magnetic field okay so this is the this is the magnetic field as a function of x what do you see that at the origin here at that point the magnetic field is maximum and when you go far from the origin of the loop or coil magnetic field goes down okay we have magnet maximum magnetic field at the origin of the loop or coil maximum magnetic field here maximum magnetic field here now let's try to find a relation between magnetic dipole as a source of magnetic field during the last lecture i have shown that picture okay last last week if you have a current carrying loop like this okay we have um, magnetic moment or magnetic dipole and what i have told you that you can consider that this is n pole this is s pole magnetic dipole for this reason it is called as magnetic dipole or magnetic moment then we have magnetic field lines from n pole to s pole now we will get the proof for that okay so during the last lecture we have found that um, magnetic moment of just single loop is given by i times area but if you have n loops the magnetic moment or magnetic dipole is given by n times i times area i is the current a is the area of the loop in case of this one the area is given by pi a square okay then instead of a just use this one here then mu is given by that expression magnetic moment of that coil okay let's consider what do you see here in that formula here we have n i a square here we have n i a square just take this n i a square mu over pi put it there finally magnetic field produced by a coil will be given in terms of magnetic moment of the coil okay mu zero this is constant mu over 2 pi x square plus a square over 3 power 3 half so um, what we see here that magnetic dipole or magnetic moment can be considered as a source of magnetic field indeed it is correct so this is uh, another example um, magnetic field of a coil a coil consisting of 10 circular loops with radius 0.6 meter carries a 5 amp current so let's consider we have 100 turns like this 100 loops and current is given radius is given okay within that within that um, equation what else uh, find the magnetic field at a point along the axis of the coil 0.8 meter from the center so let's say what is the magnetic field uh, in here at that position so we can use that formula a number of turns are given current is given a is given x is given you can calculate b easily okay put everything here then you can calculate 1.1 times 10 to minus 4 tesla so what was the second question along the axis at what 
distance from the center of the coil is the field magnitude 1 over 8 as great as at the center. So um, what we have learned here that at the center of the coil, the magnetic field is maximum, and then it goes down with distance from the um, center of the coil, okay? So the question is that we have certain distance from the center of the coil, and um, then we have certain magnetic field in that distance. So, and that magnetic field is less than the magnetic field at the origin of the coil. At the uh, center of the coil, x is zero. This x here at the center of the coil is zero because position is here. Okay, x is zero. We have already done it. So, like this one. Then um, here we have a. We know it here, we have A, V know it, and you can calculate X. You can calculate magnetic field in that question by using that formula, or you can calculate magnetic field by using that formula. Okay, if you calculate mu, magnetic moment of that coil, N I pi A square, N is given, 100 circular loops and uh, radius is given, current is given, put them here, then you can calculate magnetic moment. And by using that formula, mu zero times mu over that expression, you can calculate magnetic field, you will get the same result. 1.1 times 10 to minus four Tesla. So you drive five amp current and you have 100 loops, but the magnetic field is around the magnetic field of Earth, okay, very small magnetic field. So then you can consider that how it is difficult to produce such strong fields of one Tesla or several Tesla. Here we have 10 to minus four Tesla. Even if you apply five amp current and if you use 100 circular loops, then in order to get one Tesla, you need more. Okay, it is difficult. So here I have bio application and um, then I will finish my lecture. Magnetic fields for magnetic resonance imaging systems. So this type of machines usually requires or uses a magnetic field of about 1.5 Tesla. Okay, so just consider that in order to get huge 1.5 Tesla, you need many number of turns and you need huge current or you should decrease the radius. So you can do more or less three changes on, on the design of the uh, coil here. So let's consider that this is a coil or solenoid, okay? In the MR machine, we have many loops here and you drive current in order to increase the B, in order to get that huge magnetic field, you can increase the number of the coils here, or you can increase the uh, magnitude of the current traveling here, or you can decrease the radius. So what about the radius? The patient will enter into the center of the coil. Then radius must be arranged according to the size of the patients. So, so here you have limitations. You cannot decrease this one a little bit. You cannot decrease this one more but you can increase this one or you can increase this one. If you use superconducting wires, you can drive huge currents, then you can get huge magnetic fields. Or you can apply balls, increase the number of the turns, number of the loops, and increase the magnitude of the current. So you, you drive huge currents, then the coils uh, will be uh, very hot, and for this reason, they, they are best in liquid helium at a temperature of 4.2 Kelvin uh, to keep them from overheating. Actually, uh, what is this temperature? 4.2 Kelvin. If you convert that temperature from Kelvin to degree Celsius, it is around minus 270 degrees. Minus 
270 degrees Celsius, okay? 4.2 Kelvin, this is the temperature of liquid helium. This temperature is also required to cool the coil wire wires to make them superconducting. And many superconducting materials, um, many superconducting materials um, become superconducting or earn superconducting properties below that temperature, which we have discussed in the previous chapters. So um, this is the um, final transparency of the lecture today. Do you have any question? Any question? Then, if not, I will close the session. Okay, see you on Thursday.